Hello everyone and welcome back to my colonization series in Kerbal Space Program 0.25. In this episode I really need to fulfill some of these contracts so that we can amass the funds we need to continue building our colony that we have finally linked up on the moon and of course our stations. Uh, we have one around the moon and one around Kerbin. So uh, there is also the matter of the space tug but I'll leave that for now because we we could probably do some science to unlock some more parts for that. I forget if we've unlocked the claw just yet. I'll take a look at the tech tree in a sec. And so we've got a few contracts. The first one I'll probably do is just perform aerial surveys of Kerbin at an altitude of 17,000 to 24,000. And that is probably the work of a space plane, right? I mean, that's going to be something we use a space plane for. Uh, so I'm going to endeavor to build at least a plane. I think we should build at least a plane. And then we can uh, move on to... I, I, I don't fancy uh, doing Minmus with a rover right now. Though we do have the Duna with a rover, so maybe testing that rover on Min... Well, the Minmus rovers are totally different anyway. Uh, Minmus's gravity is so light that we need to build it totally differently. Um, Science day from the moon I just keep putting off. I guess I'll just continue to be a thing. So we'll go for the aerial surveys uh, around Kerbin and then work on the Duna contracts uh, including building a station with six Kerbals. Uh, we will need to send a rover over for to uh, figure out these anomalies. Maybe more than one depending on how far away these anomalies are from each other. And then finally perform aerial surveys of Duna at pretty low altitude when you look at it but uh, lots and lots of science for that so we're going to be flying low over over Duna and uh, we'll, we'll see about that so but the first thing is to uh, try out a plane on Kerbin. Now I haven't unlocked many uh, plane parts so let's take a look at the tech tree for that so here we are at the tech tree and uh, you can see I sort of uh, stalled out here we have enough uh, funds to unlock this one and I think we definitely should otherwise we won't even have the Mark II cockpit so I'll get that and uh, we are in normal mode in this so it, I have to remember that I don't have to unlock all the parts individually like I do in hard mode in the stock series I can't uh, import the Derek yet though uh, in my stock series I have a space plane called the Derek and I really want to try that out in FAR but I can't unlock it yet because we definitely do not have the the parts necessary we would at least need we'll need some of these uh, we'll need some of these and so we need a lot more science before I can unlock that space plane which means that I have to make a space plane from scratch and um, some people have been asking me to do a build process uh, in in this and also uh, some people have been asking me about how to build planes in FAR so Let's uh, let's go to the space plane hangar and take a look at that. Okay, well the starting thing is obvious. This is the Mark II cockpit, and because of its unique shape, we don't have too much choice in terms of how we continue it. Uh, so, uh, and we don't have the shorter fuselages, so we're going to have to go with these. Now we're basically doing atmospheric stuff, so maybe oops, focusing on the liquid fuel first might be a thing. Now the trick is that uh, we already have a high uh, center mass that's really far forward because of the cockpit. The cockpit is two tons in front. Now the liquid fuel is lighter than the liquid fuel and oxidizer generally and we could empty this tank a little bit depending on how much liquid fuel we need. This is 3.5 tons. I, uh, in the old, uh, with the old tanks uh, they were, this tank would have been heavier than this tank but in the end we're probably going to not have all of this liquid fuel. Uh, maybe let's say let's let's give it halfway or something like that okay and uh, we'll have something like this let's get uh, Mechjeb in there and so we want some sort of engine a rocket I mean, of course, I'm uh, aiming for a space plane combined with stuff, and the rocket will have to be gimbling. Two thousand seven hundred in vacuum is good enough, and that thrust to weight ratio is fine. Okay, well, let's let's talk about far. Though uh, 
all of these are technically important, but uh, what you'll want to focus on if, if you're not sure about stuff is this tab, uh, Data and Stability Derivatives. And I'm going with a density of 1, that's your atmospheric density. And Mach number 0.35 is about as uh, fast as you want to be uh, lifting off from the runway. Uh, 120 meters per second is Mach 3.35. Uh, and you can see some of the red derivatives here. Okay, and so change in pitch up angular acceleration with respect to z direction velocity should be negative. Okay, so this is the change in your pitch with respect to z direction velocity. I, uh, I'm i not entirely sure how they orient the, the, um, the whatchamacallits, the, the axes x, y, and z, but I, I would assume given the context that this means uh, how fast you're going up this this is your flip out kind of thing maybe um, change in pitch up angular acceleration pitch control input should be positive so obviously when you have a pitch input you want your pitch to actually change positively okay and so right now of course we have no pitch input that's why that's zero here roll right angular acceleration with respect to side slip angle beta and so this is if you're already uh, if you're deviating from your prograde vector, uh, which means you have a slide side slip, and this is how much your roll is going to change uh, as you do that. And so you want it to restore. Basically, what you want is the plane to get back to normal. And right now, what's happening is if this thing is deviating from the prograde vector, it's going to actually roll away from it. It's going to deviate even more. So this is a problem, and so we need some control in order to solve that. Yaw right, well, we don't even have anything to control yaw, so it's not even a thing. Uh, of course, yaw is controlled by your vertical stabilizer. We don't have one of those. And the zeros there should be pretty easy to figure out. Change in y direction acceleration with respect to yaw right rate should be positive. Okay, so yes, uh, the y axis is the yaw axis. Makes sense. Okay, so yeah, so basically we're going to be solving the reds here. Now, we've got a pretty hefty rocket uh, power here. And in fact, if I dump more liquid fuel, we can have more delta V there. What we need is the jets. And what I'm going to do, uh, we've got uh, various intakes. Let me see which ones we actually unlocked. Ah, nuts. We don't have any of the good intakes. We just have these circular intakes, the radial intakes. We don't even have the neat little new ones. Okay. So we're going to have to go with some sort of uh, straight sort of cylinder, right? Now, here's where we want to start figuring the center mass. Pretty far back, which is what we want. And so let's just put that there. And link, 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 link. Okay. Center mass, center of lift. We don't have any lift yet. And of course, we want two of these. Where was the center mass? Keep it there. Okay. Blue. Let's go blue. It's a little bit different. Okay. Wing connector type C. Okay. And then we can do a lot of that to smooth out this bottom area. Remember, this thing doesn't have to carry any cargo anywhere. It just needs to carry... It doesn't even need to carry kerbals, I don't think. We just need to explore certain areas, but it'd be nice to carry some kerbals with us. Okay, probably keep the top open. I don't think Far likes it when you layer wings. Let's see what Far has to say right now, huh? Okay, now remember, we're only checking low Mach and density 1, which means that we are currently concerned with just getting off the ground. Okay and so we still got problems there but the numbers you see are not quite as bad as they used to be these are now green 
and we haven't even put control surfaces all I did was add some wingage here and we've got a coefficient of lift we've got a coefficient of drag but our angle of attack right now that means how far up I need to tilt the nose in order to get off the ground is 20 degrees that's a bit much in fact I'm pretty sure my little engine on the tail will scrape off if I try and go with just this so very interesting we need more wings doesn't look too bad does it sort of like a business jet now I'm, I'm the type that always uses a canard so I'm going to be doing that but we'll get to that in a sec okay let, let's go to far and see what happens when I just add this oh now um, hmm. Uh, what you got? I wanted to compare with what it was before I put the, these on, but actually, what you'll notice is that these numbers actually have actually gone down. We got an extra red one, but actually, these are very low numbers now. So we're good. Let's see what happens at Mach one, but at uh, at higher uh, at lower air density, which means higher altitude. Okay. So you see, not too much change there. Okay, that one actually went all right. Now this is a little bit of a problem because I don't think I have enough. Oh no, I, actually that's pretty good. Um, you'll need at least 0.7, I think, thrust weight ratio with the jets. So that's sort of a. Though this is pretty hefty, I think uh, I think I wouldn't want to have it this heavy with just the jets. It's, we have tweak skill, don't we? Yeah, we do. Okay. That's going to be important. I prefer these as canards. Seems shadowed. Interesting. What happens when we put canards on? So actually, uh, there's a little bit of a... I, I get the feeling sometimes that Far doesn't really like canards very much. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Set them down things go worse, but that's because they're deflected quite a lot there. Um, a little bit of, oops, wrong one. Oops, yeah, okay. Not too much. The problem right now is that I haven't put control surfaces on the wings, so let's let's actually hold off on the canards and focus on the wings. Now after you put the the control surfaces then and only then can you really change the angles on the wings and I want to have a nice little bit of angle there because of looks actually. Um, yes there is that aerodynamic impact and we'll, we'll see that but my main uh, criteria right now for, for that is looks. Okay, now we solved that one. Uh, and low wings, I guess, uh, well, I'm not even going to speculate. I don't know enough about aerodynamics to speculate on most of this stuff. I just try and solve these problems and uh, hope for the best. Uh, let's just check uh, Mach 1.2 density. Ah, that's, that's pretty good right now. So we're looking good. Five. Our angle of attack is still nine, though. That's that's something we need to figure out because nine is still a little bit high. Okay, that uh, solves that side slip one, and angle of attack is now eight point seven. This is an interesting configuration. What happens if I move it a little bit forward? Not a little bit forward, a lot forward. Not too much. These look a little bit small to me. And one problem with uh, a lot of people's designs is that they really undersize their vertical stabilizers. Okay, that solves a lot of problems already. Could use a little bit more wingage, huh? Because clearly we've got uh, this 8.87 thing. And also our center mass is a little bit unfortunate. Maybe another one of these parts before Let's see, move that forward, move that back, 
and another one of those in there. There we go. Now our center of lift is too far forward. I don't like the look of this. Hold on. Forget that. Yeah, center of mass is too far forward. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill up this tank. That solves it. But let's see what happens when the tanks are empty. Now that the the fact that these two are empty shouldn't move it too much because I had set them right at the center of mass. But you see it's just a little bit behind the center of lift now. And we don't want that. So that means we need to move these guys which are sort of sitting on top of everything forward a bit. Let's see what happens if I put uh, these guys on instead. Well that solves that problem. Our angle of attack is worse though. Uh, but we can solve that by a little judicious tilt. Let's see. What we really need is more control surfaces to lift us up but let's see not like that. Let's go like this. That's pretty extreme. Only nine... Poo. That's too extreme for that sort of thing. Well, those didn't help at all. In fact, uh, this is... Well, this is not great. Uh, well, maybe if I had put them... No? Now everything is... Why is everything... Oh, because I changed the center mass, I suppose. Yeah. Okay, let's see what that does. <laughs> it makes it worse. Uh, how did? Oh, I I, I haven't got the canards on. Mm. Okay. Um, really, it's just the angle of attack that I'm worried about right now. Let's check how this goes at Mach One. Saul Green. Angle of attack at uh, at Mach One is uh, 4 degrees. So that's not bad at all. So we have uh, some instability here. Once we get to Mach 0.4, it's clear. And our angle of attack is not bad at higher, higher speeds. Okay. I think, uh, oh, a thrust, though, is a little bit of a problem. You know what? For this iteration, maybe what I need to do is... We'll eventually put rapiers, how about that? And I'm going to go with three jets. We'll carry the oxidizer still, so that we can add rockets to this later. But if I do that, things are still okay. 0.35. In fact, uh, that that little red number is solved now. Um, angle attack is still high, and at slower speeds, it's uh, it gets worse, much worse. We're gonna have a high liftoff speed, but I think we can get to that speed with this before the runway ends. So we need landing gear. This is pretty iffy, actually. What I might want to do is put some, just for the first test flight, just in case things go wrong, put some little rocket boosters here. That's to make sure we get off the runway. That'll give plenty of oomph, if necessary. And so I'm going to action group stuff. Oh, we don't have enough intakes, do we? Uh, yeah, that's a thing. Huh, funny that they can attach there, but not behind there. Okay, well, I'll take that. We, we're just going to be doing atmospheric uh, flights, right? We're going to be exploring Kerbin a little bit. Okay, so we've got the air intakes. Let's get the action groups. 
Right, so uh, action group one. Uh, really, all we need right now is to action group these uh, these uh, little tiny rockets. It's got to say toggle. Toggle. Okay, and we're not going to activate them just yet. We'll see if we can just do everything using our jets. So, I'm going to call this, uh, hmm, what letter isn't normally used? Well, let's just call it K1 for colony colonization 1. Okay. Yep, now it's a matter of selecting crew. <sighs> well, if I kill Jeb, I kill Jeb, right? I mean, we've done all the number testing and all that. We've done what we can, we can do. Now it's a matter of whether the game wants to mess with me. Okay. Here we go. Uh, I I forgot the lights. Um, well, let's let's hold on. Let's put brakes on, and I'm gonna time warp to daylight. Let's make sure uh, Jeb is not gonna be blinded by the sun. Let's get that a little bit higher. Okay, that should be fine. Okay, definitely a tail scraper. Most of my my things are a little bit close on the tail. Okay, I think we're all good. So we know I, I made it for uh, angle of attack 9 degrees and I want 120 meters per second but I'm going to start rotating well before that. So trying for rotation, we've got rotation and we have lift. Don't deviate too much from prograde on the test run, gear up. Okay, we've got a bit of a pitch wobble. Now, if the numbers are correct, that pitch wobble should decrease over time, but we've got SAS doing stuff, maybe. SAS tends to overcompensate when, when things don't go its way. We've got some sites to explore. Navigation set to, is that? Okay. Navigation set. So we've got a target? No, no we don't. How, how is navigation set? That's funny. Uh, but, uh, what, what, uh, that's, actually we're, we're probably easier to get to this one. That's a uh, hundred and, oh, there, there we go. Okay, we've got a little marker on here. All right, that's, that's what I wanted to see. Okay, time to turn. Now we have to be pretty high over the thing, right? Um, 17,000. So that's that's no... We need to gain altitude like crazy. Why, why does it look like this one isn't even running? Well, it is. It's just not... I don't think this thing can get to 17,000. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Now that's interesting. Okay. Hold on there. Uh, okay, well, 
They'd be a little bit ha uh, happier if uh, the other wing would break off as well. Hold on, orbit. How do we... let's see... Nope, this isn't going to be very good for Jeb. EVA Jeb. Ah, uh, didn't get his parachute on in time. Not that he had a parachute, but I'm just saying. Uh, okay. Hmm. Well, that was not a very successful test flight. Well, we'll take our medicine. Well, it looks like there's no uh, there's no hope for Jeb. Uh, I I don't know whether it was the mode or tack life support, but uh, we've lost Jeb. And so, yeah. Well, these planes, I tell you. But I don't think that plane would have gotten to the altitude we need. Let's go to the tech tree. Obviously I fault my piloting skills, which were horrible. Yeah, we need these turbojets. We don't have the science for them yet. We'll be able to, well, considering how easily the wings snapped off of that design, I, I think maybe I should hold off on, yeah. I, I'm got, I think we need to pause our space plane program at this point. So I, I, I hope you learned something from my fiddling around with FAR. But, uh, but yeah, let's, let's pause the whole space plane thing and now focus on, on the Duna thing. Uh, I guess, let me, let me see what the time limit is on the, on the looking at sites around Kerbin. Looks like we got a deadline for a year and 167 days. I think that should be enough time to handle the entire uh, Duna mission if necessary. Since we're not uh, we're not actually bringing anything back, actually. First thing I want to do is build a build a station that we're gonna send to Duna and send it up. I'm not gonna go through that build process. Uh, so let's go to VAB and see what I cook up. Okay, I think I've got what I want here, and I just need to add some. Oh, actually, these thruster blocks look better, don't they? Yeah, let's get some of these. Um, so yeah, uh, it's an interesting sort of design. Uh, it's sort of more of a mobile station, if you will. Uh, if you look at it, it's sort of uh, it's gonna have uh, this this uh, stage, the dot stage, tag along, and uh, that's uh, that's why it's got it on docking ports, because then we could probably slip a different module in here if necessary. Um, yeah, but otherwise it's gonna have that stage stay with it. Uh, unlike the Earth orbit station where basically the entire thing was the station, uh, we can't, well, we could have done that with this uh, Duna station, but I wanted to launch the full Yakko Wacko dot thing all together for once. And so we're doing that. And you can see the station is, uh, well, it's, its mass is largely life support, and you could probably uh, figure out why. I mean, uh, we've got we're gonna have six Kerbals in, and that means uh, we're gonna end up with about 500 days worth of life support. Let's say uh, close to 600 days, but that's just so that we don't have to worry too much about sending them. Well, we're gonna have to sell them, send them more supplies, but uh, the timing of it won't be too constricted. And so that's a major consideration in this. Let's take a look at the crew. We clearly need to hire some more crew. Let's see about that. Go to astronaut complex. Uh, well, let's just get a mix of people, huh? There we go. Let's go back. Okay, now. I'm not gonna get the other two uh, main guys, because... And Champro's been around for a while. Let's get some of the newbies to uh, head out to 
Duna. We'll say that they specially train for this. I think this requires some courage. Okay, and uh, plenty of stupidity. We've got uh, Gregard, uh, Mike, sure. From now on, we're gonna keep the high stupidity people for the flight testing, I think. I'll, uh, I guess Mike will, will stay after all. Uh, Kirsted. And just uh, one guy in the habitation ring, Mateni Kerman. Okay, that's six. So we've got six Kerbals. Okay, wow, well, that looks like a good rocket. Now, let's see, uh, where's the, the orbital? So it's recognized that we've got an orbital station that has an antenna docking port and power, and we've got six Kerbals. It doesn't actually say that we need six Kerbals in, by the way. It says uh, supporting at least six Kerbals. Uh, but we've got six Kerbals in because, well, if you've got a facility that supports six Kerbals, you might as well have them there, right? Um, and then we need to put the station in orbit around Duna and then we're basically done as long as the controls are neutral. Okay. SAS on, throttle up, the guys are ready to go. Oh, uh, are we really at a transfer point for Duna? We don't want to have them, uh, see, we're not in the right timing. Okay, hold on. Okay, system crashed when I tried to recover, but I managed to recover anyway. We got 100% back and everything. The crew is all safe. So uh, let's go to the tracking station. Yeah, so rookie mistake not uh, lining up with... Whoa, what's that? This must be uh, one of those, uh, those contracts. The fine print is telling me that I want something right there. Okay, but uh, that's not what we're doing right now. Uh, rookie mistake not getting lined up with uh, Duna ahead of time. Now this is going to be tricky. I have to worry about my consumables, right? I can't just time work through all of this without knowing what uh, what my Kerbals are going to need. Let me back out here. So yeah, I think I'm still a little bit shell-shocked from the whole loss of Jebediah. And uh, what we really need is the attack life support. Well, this is the configuration window. Yeah, allow respawn, not there, so so Jeb is gone. Uh, but I need to know how much life support... Um, no, you know what? Uh, we can jump to one of our missions and see. Okay, here we are at the, at the habitat, and this is sort of to make myself feel better after losing Jeb. Uh, probably what we need to do is... Okay, the rescue pod needs rescuing. It's, uh, it doesn't have enough food water and oxygen there. 73 days, I think. Uh, let's land it here, actually. If there was any place that uh, we might need a rescue pod, maybe it's here. Um, the Kerbatat itself with one cruise... Actually, actually, this is not a good place, is it? Because it's only got 157 days worth of that st the consumables. Winter Station. How about Mooner Station? Maybe it can dock with Mooner Station. How much does that have? Yeah, let's have the rescue pod just dock with Mooner Station. We'll make this initial burn with the rescue pod. It's got plenty of Delta V. You can see it's got almost 3,000, so not short of Delta V on this little thing. You can see closest approach distance going down there. So I'm just going to watch that. Okay, that was a minimum. That is certainly good enough. Okay, we can see the facilities clearly now and select our docking port. Come on. Come on. Take SAS off, maybe. Ah, there we go. All right, Richmore and Pepe Kerman are all linked up. 
Let's see, we've got 390, 348, 711, and then that Kerbatat, the is going to be the thing. Uh, we've only got 157 days, but that's that's good enough to launch a Duna mission. Uh, but let's see how long it takes us to time warp to the correct phase angle to launch that mission. So, tracking station time. I think this might be a lot more time warping than... We have time for so the limit that I'm gonna say is 200 day 220 is as far as I can go okay we're getting pretty close to the mark both in terms of when our food water and oxygen are gonna run out at the lunar lunar base okay uh, let's let's check up on the lunar base first and then we, we've still got some time before we can launch at Duna okay it looks like they have 20 days remaining um, oh, he has. John Gas is all alone in here. Uh, yeah, 20 days. Uh, we're down to 211 at the emergency habitat, uh, 253 in the station, and then uh, in Kerbin Station, there's only one crew, and he's he's well provisioned. But uh, yeah, 20 days. Okay, well, I'll keep that in mind. Let's go back to the tracking station. So I'll extend my limit to 200, day 230, let's say. That's borderline, but I think we can launch it. Okay, so let's launch the Duna mission. And then in the next episode, I'm going to, but uh, I'm not going to get the Duna mission underway altogether just yet. We'll just get into orbit. And then in the next episode, I'm going to have to resupply the lunar base and then uh, continue with the Duna mission to put a base around Duna. And we'll look into the other missions. I don't know if I want to do them on the same transfer time or a different time. The rover, and then we have to. We haven't even done a successful space plane on Kerbin, much less try and send one to Duna. So maybe we'll have to hold off on that for the time being. But we'll see. Let's get to launching the mission. Okay, uh, it's uh, given us warnings. We are down to nine days on the Kerbatat, and it's given us these warnings. That's nice, though. I think nine days is plenty of buffer, actually. Uh, I don't know how how the warnings are set up. Probably percentage of total capacity rather than anything else. Uh, the guys are probably in different seats. I tried to pick the same ones, but I think I don't think I had head speed in the in the original lineup. Okay, uh, but otherwise, this is a magnificent looking rocket, isn't it? That's something. Okay, well, let's hope it remains stable. Uh, I already had one failure, one tragic and catastrophic failure, the loss of Shebediah Kerman is, is always a great blow to the to the space program, the Kerbal Space Program, but uh, but we, we plunge ahead in honor of uh, Jeb, and of course, if there's anything Jeb would want to do is to conquer the Red Planet. So here we go. Uh, everything looks good. We'll have that under surface mode and launch. Okay. Uh, keep it tight, keep it tight. We got to clear the tower. Okay, we're good. Tower clear. So yeah, I'm definitely going to have Smart ASS help with uh, being in the good graces of FAR after FAR already destroyed one of my craft today. Clearly my piloting skills are not, uh, not conducive to making FAR happy. All of our crew seems to be looking fairly serious. Three, four, five. We only have five? Ah, oh, but uh, that's good enough for the contract, right? I mean, we have facilities for six. One, two, three. I thought I put six in. But I only see... Oh, no, uh, the one in the habitation ring doesn't show up. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah, we've got six on board. It's just that the one in the habitation ring never shows up. Okay, going to pitch 85 now.
The roll is intent. The roll is because roll is set to zero. That's not it rolling on its own. Okay, launch looking good so far. We are almost through the far kill region. Our Kerbal crew is having no trouble with the G-forces. They're fairly mild right now. Oh, here we go. First stage out. Decoupling. Okay. Second stage ignition. I guess... Oh, okay. They're, they're upright. I was worried that they were sideways, but they're, they're upright. So it's all good. So, let's see what the life support situation for this is. Tuna Station 1, about 600, almost 600 days. So that's good. We'll still send supplies at the next opportunity, though. Now, there are various uh, recycling units and the carbon extractor units. However, those are extremely heavy. So, I, actually, they would uh, totally throw off the mass of this vehicle, this station. I mean, I think they're like five tons a piece, so that's that's a bit heavy to be uh, trying to launch that on here. I mean, right now you can see this uh, vessel mass is uh, 48.8, just about, and uh, that's with these stages. All right, so we've got uh, 750 left in this stage, and then the remainder gives us a total of 2,400, which should be fine, not only for the transfer, but to slow down around Duna, though we will do a little bit of arrow braking, I suppose. Let's, let's actually plot it. Let's see if uh, this is an okay time to transfer. Okay, so we've got... A Doing a periapsis of uh, 34,220 kilometers. We'll, of course, do a adjustment at the ascending node there. And this is going to cost us 1,100. I feel it's necessary to make sure that we get the, these guys underway properly. So I am going to do this burn now. Even though it might cost a little bit more than it would have if I just waited a few more days. And then, so in the next episode, we can start off with resupplying our our Mooner base, and then also seeing these guys to their destination. And hopefully that'll help me uh, clear my head of the distress caused by the loss of Jeb. Okay, that's it for the second stage. The Wacko stage is out. And SEP. Okay, SEP is good. And continue. Oh, ignite. And continue. Okay, we've got a uh, good mid course plane change here. Uh, got to 933 kilometers. There's an Ike encounter as well. Uh, we can avoid that uh, about 30 meters per second so this this is all underway let's inflate the habitat let's get them turned up right that's more of a camera thing than anything else obviously there's no preferential direction right now but there we are uh, our prospective Duna orbit station more of a mobile station I know but uh, it will serve the purpose it will certainly fulfill the contract and out it goes let's uh, well I won't do the whole departure thing because we've got a Kerbal on the surface that needs some food water and oxygen supplies so I want to make sure I get those to him and have the time to do that just in case first attempt fails or something need to uh, have enough buffer but this uh, this little guy is underway 
uh, colored more for Duna than for Kerbin, so the colors are clashing over here. But, uh, yep, anyway. Well, what can I say? I think uh, at least uh, Jeb will be proud that we got this going here. And uh, I, I don't know. I think this is the first time I've lost Jeb. I don't know. If I've lost Jeb, it's been a very long time. Um, thinking about how long it's been since I've had a... Uh, the, the only times I've had the wing rip off of my vehicle like that... Of course, it, it's uh, aerodynamic failures. Whoa, hold on. Noise outside. Okay, well, I don't know what time the noise outside is going to end so I'm just going to have to wrap it up. I'll say that uh, yeah the only time the wings ripped off on one of my airplanes was in the EDB aerospace series while I was testing them. I thought that was more of a thing with procedural wings but uh, I guess I didn't really expect that it would happen with the stock wings like well so quickly but well I'll have to fly a little bit more carefully from now on I'm sure all the Kerbals will know about it, but uh, in honor of uh, Jeb, I, I sort of see this as sort of a, um, you know, the tragedy, a similar tragedy as uh, the JFK, uh, you know, this sort of galvanizing the nation uh, towards certain reforms and certain changes and certain goals. Uh, I think uh, similarly, the the loss of Jebediah Kerman will drive the Kerbals uh, that much more towards their goal of conquest conquering space. Alright then, uh, with that, uh, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.